Welcome. You're listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. Thank you so much for listening. Music created for the Bulldog Educator is by David Galvez. Podcast platform is through anchor.fm. Hello, and this is Kirsten Wilson with the Bulldog Educator Podcast. Um, Starting into 2021, this is the uh, episode 13 of our season one, but it is the first episode of the 2021 year. And in this episode, I'm just going to share some personal reflections um, that I had from 2020. And in fact, I decided to list them as 20 personal reflections of things um, that I had learned over the past year. And so I wanted to share those with you. Uh, The first personal reflection is walking isn't just for exercise. Um, I truly needed the walks this year and they became attitude adjustment walks. Um, There are times that um, a walk could help me just kind of get everything out and think about things. And um, it also became um, a position um, indirectly that helped me get on a path of health. And so um, walking isn't just for the exercise, but it was also um, had a direct impact on how I handle my stress, um, how I interact with other people. And so just beneficial all around. Um, another thing um, that I learned Um, I was doing some intermittent fasting and I tend to be an emotional eater and I stayed on that um, intermittent fasting uh, when we went into quarantine in March and it actually helped me um, keep from over snacking during the pandemic. And so I only had a short window um, that I had. And so that um, urge to eat and, um, and during the time that I was on my fast, it actually helped me. So intermittent fasting for me was a good deterrent for emotional eating in a pandemic. The third thing um, is that um, during the 2020 year, I really dived into the Enneagram. Um, It was super beneficial for me to understand others, um, especially since I think that we all went into a state of stress um, during the pandemic and sometimes behaviors that seemed unusual or actually quite usual based on where you go in stress and um, regards to your Enneagram and how you work with others. Um, another uh, reflection for me was implicit bias is real and that it exists in all of us. Um, and in addition to that, it's my job to learn and identify my own implicit bias. And the other thing um, that I learned is that majority culture isn't meant to be maintained. It's meant to be identified and dismantled Um, when we have a majority culture and it is not um, inclusive, but rather exclusive, then that majority culture is a harm to um, our general well-being as a whole. Um, another thing that I learned, and this was part of my process of really getting to know um, universal design for learning, um, but it also kind of um, applied to everything in my life. Um, j- I learned that just because I didn't see something as a barrier for myself didn't mean it wasn't a barrier for someone else. And so that's really important um, in learning and just all aspects of life. If you don't see something as a barrier, it doesn't mean it's not a barrier to someone else. And so um, when someone expresses something that is a barrier or a hindrance and you don't see it as that, it might be good to step back and try to gain a different perspective before assuming that there isn't a barrier there. Another thing I learned was just because you know something doesn't mean others do or understand what you know. Um One of the things that really became evident when we went into the pandemic and we went home for learning um, is that students that had a digital knowledge of how to interact and consume um, digital information didn't necessarily know how to learn digital information. And just because I knew how to to understand um, and that they had a, a working knowledge of Um, of a device didn't mean that they necessarily knew how to use it in a different capacity. And so learning that and being able to step back and scaffold that. 
Um, another thing that I also noted is that people claim to be experts when they fear their current title or station is at risk of becoming irrelevant. Um, I really saw this come out as we all went into a virtual situation that um, organizations and programs and things that had never been digital before suddenly became, let me offer you 10 expert information on how you can make virtual learning um, successful. And I really think that sometimes that um, wasn't helpful um, because they offered advice that wasn't necessarily tested out or really actually worked. And I think that added more stress or pressure to those that were in the trenches trying to figure it out. Um, it's just better, in my opinion, to acknowledge that you don't know something or you're ignorant on something and be humble and vulnerable about that. And then seek out those that are, are actual experts in the field. The another thing that um, I also learned is nothing, no matter how financially profitable, um, is as important as connection with other people. Um, if you seek out uh, financial profitability over, um, over connection or you sacrifice connection for that financial gain, um, it really uh, backfires. Um, connection should be most important. Relationships should be most important. And that should be your first priority. And if anything compromises that, then it's back to the drawing board before you pursue that financial um, profitable type of situation. Another thing, and this is really um, heartfelt, um, my 11th um, reflection is something that I really noticed during the pandemic was our youth. Um, they have so much to offer. They're amazing and full of promise. Um, but we tended to um, not hear their voice. And one of the things that I really noted is that youth are amazing and full of promise. They shouldn't be underestimated or stereotyped um, or should their impact be minimized. Um, and one of the things that uh, really struck me is how much we've considered um adults in this pandemic and situations like that, but we haven't given a lot of consideration to those kiddos um, that have a voice, especially those middle school and high school kids and college kids who have largely gone ignored during this pandemic. Um, my other thing is, is that if you've been thinking about doing something, do it. That's one of the reasons we have the Bulldog Educator podcast right now is like, I had thought about doing a podcast for a long time and I finally was like, well, why not? I mean, what do I have to lose? And so if you're thinking about something, do it. Don't just sit on it. Um, and uh, I've also, that's how my instructional model for online learning came about, is that I was thinking about it. And instead of just waiting for something else to come along, I decided I was going to jump full all in and do it. Uh, another thing is identify your strengths. And, and then don't apologize to anyone for those strengths. Oftentimes, sometimes, or oftentimes, uh, what people perceive as threat or um, don't recognize in us or maybe try to minimize in us is actually a strength of ours. And you should never apologize for who you are, the strengths and the gifts that you have. Um, and so live out those strengths, uh, reside in those strengths, obviously maximize those strengths from a good place. Um, you know, I've heard the phrase, your greatest strength can also be your greatest weakness. Recognize when it is being utilized in a positive way. And then also look and see when your strength may be impacting others in a negative way and really try to channel in where you're utilizing your strengths for that positive impact. Another thing um, I, I learned is to identify those around you that can help you achieve crazy and innovative ideas and, you know, lean in with them. Uh, try it out. Don't be afraid of failure. And then don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, if it's an idea that you really think is a good idea and you tried it out and it wasn't successful the first time, back up and try it a different direction. And then, of course, celebrate the strengths uh, of that team that's helping you out with those um, and their abilities um, and pour into each other and so that you can achieve those crazy and innovative ideas. And then, um, my 15th thing, and this is something that really has helped me in the pandemic, it's also helped me in seeing others in a positive light, is practice, practicing gratitude every dadgum day, even when you don't feel like it. In fact, even more when you don't feel like it, because when you practice gratitude, when you're just not feeling it, 
It actually resets your mind. And if you're in a funk, it kind of helps you get out of that funk. Now, do I say, you know, um, toxic uh, positivity? Absolutely not. But there is something you can find to be grateful for every freaking day um, and just go for it. The other thing that I have found, and this has actually been advice that I've given to new teachers, new administrators, um, because the job of education can be super hard. And then especially for everyone during this pandemic, um, it's so easy to get pulled down by all the negativity and the things that aren't going well. But before you put a, a lid or a bow on your day, end your day on a good note. If it's sending a positive letter um, or email or calling a, a student or a parent and just giving those praises or um, reaching out to a fellow colleague and um, laughing about something, but each end each day on a good note. And that actually, when you end your work day on a good note, that helps you come back and start the next day. Um, the other thing is, is I use um, leverage your technology. I learned so much because we had to cook so much more during this pandemic. Um, I use my tech to plan simple meals, create grocery lists, and then find those shortcuts um, where I was using grocery pickup or delivery. Um, and shoot, you know, if if you're able to, I, I'm not a big fan of having to prep the veggies and cut the veggies. Buy the pre-cut veggies. You can get the frozen pre-cut veggies. But find those shortcuts um, and then plan those simple meals and use that tech to help you out. Uh, this is some advice I got from Tina Bogren, and it's read at least six minutes each day. I really struggled during the pandemic uh, to read, and I'm not sure why. But when Tina Bogren brought this up in the fall about read six minutes each day, I actually finally finished a book. Um, shortly before Christmas that I have been trying to read since March. And by doing the six minutes a day, I was actually able to finish the book. And so um, that's just something, read six minutes each day. It can be for fun. It can be for professional reasons, but pick up a book and read six minutes each day. Uh, the other thing that I highly encourage is least listen to a variety of viewpoints in your profession. If you have a religion in your religion and politics and culture, uh, I think this is really important because we can get tunnel vision. And if we um, just see things from one side, we can really start to isolate ourselves um, in such a way that we um, don't necessarily have an open mind to listen. You don't necessarily have to agree with an agree, but you do have to have a perspective if you want to practice loving each other, love embracing others, and seeking first to understand others. You have to be willing to consider other perspectives. Do you have to ascribe to their belief system or, or their opinion? Absolutely not. But if we're going to, as a community and a um, group of people in general and also in education, we do have to um, take a moment and consider another person's perspective. And finally, um, my final reflection for 2020 is celebrate proudly the achievements of you, your family, and others. If you find yourself being jealous of others, ignore that, that, that tendency to be jealous and celebrate the others anyway. If you do celebrate in spite of your jealousy, you'll find your own jealousy will subside and you're more content with yourself celebrating another. And when you've done that, you just practice loving another person. And after all, um, overall, hashtag love wins. And that's one of the things that I just really wanted to emphasize in 2020 is that um, when you find yourself being negative or you find yourself um, in contention with another person, is it really uh, more important to be in opposition to another person or can you find some way to connect common ground? And speaking of connect, as we go into 2021, one of the things that um, I have um, done is I've chosen a word. And my new one word for 2021 um, is connect. And it actually ties back to my, 20, my 2020 one word, which was wholehearted. And I found as I practiced uh, the word of being wholehearted, um, throughout 2020, um, it was a, it was a challenge. 
Um, there were times that I did not want to be wholehearted. I did not want to lean in. I did not want to be vulnerable. But I found when I did, I connected with other people on a deeper level. And that was kind of a byproduct. But what I also noticed is that I really, really, really wanted to be more intentional about connecting with people in 2021. Uh, scheduling, and I know that sounds a little trite, but scheduling to make sure that I connect with people, with family, with friends, um, with colleagues, and um, being very intentional about that because I feel like I have learned how to embrace being wholehearted. And now my second step in that is making sure that I make connection with other people um, and opt in and lean in rather than opt out and isolate. And so with that, I leave you with this. I hope that as we go into 2021, uh, that um, we walk away from 2020 change um, and different. I know I have been changed and I am different. Uh, I see th things in a different way. I see people in a different way. And most of all, um, I find myself reserving dis like opinions or judgment um, and really trying to see the other person's perspective. Because overall, I want people to feel loved. I want them to have a sense of belonging because that's what I want to. And if that's what I want, then I need you to leave with that. And so with that final remark, I just want to tell you guys, um, thank you for those that you've been listening. I hope that we can, can continue to connect in 2021 uh, through the Bulldog Educator. And um, of course, as we close out this episode, uh, you can find other ways to connect with me at all as well. And I encourage you um, to whatever social media um, choice that you have that we're available please uh, direct message me or you can um, message me um, right there in the comments. I would love to hear from you and have a great rest of your week. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Bulldog Educator hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. You can find the Bulldog Educator on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at the Bulldog EDU. That's at the Bulldog EDU. You can also find us and content related to education in this podcast on our blog at thebulldogedu.org.